Charlie, what's up? Another day, another day, another day. Another day. It's always a good day when you see daylight. Do you think that, that uh, one day you'll wake up and not be here? No, I know for sure. If I don't wake up, I won't be here. <laughs> we'll be somewhere else, right? Somewhere. <laughs> That's a mystery, isn't it? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Did I, I noticed you, uh, um, I saw you here a while back on the why where you'd run, you'd you'd run did ninety laps for your ninetieth birthday, is that I right? I did. I did. I did. I had a I had my family's there, my sons were there and there and uh my wife and several well, had a pretty good crowd. was it is it ninety one way or is it forty five one way, forty five the other? A lap is there and back, 150 yards. It's so so a lap is there and back. There and back. That's a lap. So that's like 180 times. That's not a lap. That's a lap. That'd be 180. 80. 180 yeah. lengths. Lengths. That's what it amounts to. Yeah. You know, I couldn't do one. Oh well, you have to build up to it. You don't. You don't get just jump in the pool and do it. And I've been doing it since 1983. At the Y? Yeah. Uh, actually, at one section, East Ridge Hospital, uh, they put in a health center and they put in a nice Y. And I went there for about three years. And But most of the rest of the time was at the Y. Did you touch bottom when you do that, or no, no, no? So no, you're no, not no. touching bottom at oh, all. No. Oh no, 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 no. I'm not fast. I do, I do, a, I do three laps in about five minutes. It took me three hours to do ninety laps, but I did eighty on my eightieth birthday. I did eighty-eight on my eighty-eighth birthday. I did ninety on my ninetieth birthday. When is your birthday? October the 19th. And you'll be how old? Uh, this year I'll be 92. Will you do 92 laps? I'll be in October the 19th. Will you do 92 laps? Uh, I, I probably could. I'm not, I can't say right now. <laughs> Are you working on it? Are you training? No, 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 I'm not working on it. I'm, I, I swim, well, I had a little bit of an issue back the first of the year. I had a little prostate issue that I had an operation on. And then, the, before I got over that, I had a perforated ulcer they had, they had to fix. And uh, it, it sure uh, eliminated a lot of things. I was having problems I didn't know I had. But. Uh, I, since then, I'm probably doing about three days a week. Swimming three days a week? Yeah. What time do you get there? Anywhere from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. I've been scoring. They have classes, and I have to figure it out when I get up. Were they shut down during COVID? No, well, for a short time. But they've been back quite a while. Like but the pool is the safest place to be with that chlorine water. I bet, yeah, because it kill it. So they wouldn't uh, actually, for a couple of months, they would only let two in a, in a, I mean, one in a lane where we used to share a lane. And they didn't share, they're just now getting back to where they're sharing a lane. I can't imagine swimming. Were you a swimmer before? Well, I, I swam back when I was uh, real young in Chickamauga Creek down there, but I actually... But not official? No, no. We just get in and play and swing on a rope and dive yeah. and swim. 1983, I had an automobile accident. And uh, they had to go through the front to the back I had destroyed two vertebrae. They built me two vertebrae, 10 and 11, out of 
my short rib, and a piece off of my hip. And old Doc Brown told me, if you will get into an exercise program that will keep the muscles in your back strong, you will never have any problems. But if you don't, you will always have problems. So I took him at his word and actually started swimming before I got my plastic cast off. Why swimming versus something else? It's the movements that, that uh, you use a lot of your muscles because you're kicking your legs and you're moving your arms and you're turning side by side and this builds up the main muscles in your back that uh, keeps all of your vertebrae and that stuff in place. And knock on wood, I haven't had a twinge in my back since 1983. Mm. What was the automotive, automotive accidents? Well, I was on the road at that time uh, calling on builders that use roof and floor trusses. And Huntsville was my territory, and I was in Huntsville. I was coming out of Huntsville, and there was a truck with a homemade bed on the back that was loaded with a bunch of stuff strapped down. But a piece of it came off, and I didn't know what it was. So I was driving a brand new T Bird, and I swerved to the right, which they had been working on the shoulder of the road and it had dropped down several inches, and whipped it back up on the road, shot across, it was a four lane highway with a median strip in the center. And uh, when I got to the other side in the median strip, I said, <laughs> I said, boy, I'm glad I didn't hit anybody. Well, about that time, I hit a culvert at the bottom of the, the it came off into a V, and uh, I hit a little culvert, and with my driver's side front wheel, and the T-Bird stood up on its nose this way, and stood up and quivered a little bit, and sat back down. And uh, during the process, that's when it, crush my vertebrae. Like a cartoon movie. Yeah, yeah, it just, it just stood up there. Anyway, I had a brand new... <laughs> Did that scare you to death? Well, I didn't have time to get scared. I had a brand new uh, box of calling cards. I had my seat next to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were scattered all over the car. It looked like it snowed. So a guy stopped from the oncoming uh, tra traffic and ran over there and says, can I help you? And I remember just reaching over and picking up one of those cards and handing him, I says, call the ambulance and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, they took me to... Now they didn't have cell phones then. Didn't they? Oh, no, 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 no. I had a pocket full of quarters and yeah. hoped I could find a, a phone booth that would work. But uh, anyway, he took he took care of all of that, and uh, they took me to Huntsville Hospital and got me comfortable. And uh, I, I was thinking... I can't really remember if I stayed overnight or late that afternoon. Anyway, my wife had gotten there. And they strapped me to a gurney and put me in another ambulance and took me to the hospital. That's where they did the operation. All in a matter of just a few days. Now, in other words, you were just driving home and oh, yeah, all of this I was, happened. I was at the end of the day and I was, had started home, yeah. So and you were living in Chattanooga, but selling tr uh, trust to yeah, trust yeah, salesmen. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I had already always been connected with the uh, trust business, and uh, 
Before then, uh, before the gas crunch, if you remember 1972, 72, yeah. uh, the gas crunch hit and I was pumping 160,000 gallons a month and I had gotten a letter in the mail from Exxon that they were cutting my allocation to 130,000 gallons a month. And I had two stations. Do you own and operate them? Yes. And I, I did not own the building of the property, but I owned the business. Yeah. And uh, I had just stocked the second one over on the crossroads at Ulawal Ringo Road and Appleton Pike. And that was a very new station, but I had just put in all new equipment, front end alignment machine, which I didn't have on the freeway. And I had just put all that stuff in. And you know what that happened, Kevin, to my cash flow when... Yeah. Well, anyway, so... Uh, I took care of all of Tennessee Trust equipment, their personal equipment, not the large trucks because they had a, they had a sh mechanic shop back there, but all the small vehicles, I took care of them. And all of the families involved, which they were the three owners in Tennessee Trust, their families, their cars. Uh, I took care of them, and when the gas crunch hit, and I got into argument with uh, Exxon, and uh, they said, you signed a contract to stay open 24 hours a day on the freeway, and I said, you also signed that same contract said you'd furnish me gasoline. And if you don't furnish me gasoline, I'm not keeping it open at night. We fought back and forth about six months. And I got tired messing with it. So I just sold out. So the one of the main shareholders of Tennessee Trust came to me and says, hey, you know a lot about building business and you've built quite a bit. Uh, how about, they had just opened up and was very new and the carpenters back then, uh, you asked them if they want to buy a trust, they thought it was something to wear, wear to yeah. help, <laughs> help the support. Yeah, they didn't know then. <laughs> so I had to convince them this was a way to go. It would save them money, save them time, whatever. So uh, he told me what, what he would pay me and all that stuff. And I told him the only way that I go to work for him, that uh, if I kept my job up, if I needed to do a, build a little house or something, and I was doing my job, that I didn't have any repercussions. He said, no problem, no problem. So anyway, I had, the building I had done before, I knew a lot of subs. I, back then, it's a little bit different than it is now. I mean, uh, a sub was just happy to help you. I mean, they looked forward to helping yeah. you. And I didn't have any problems. I didn't have to be there every minute of the day. This was in the mid-70s. Uh, now this... Early 70s? This was before 70, before, before I opened the station. The only mm. reason I opened the station that back then building was feast and famine. It'd go two or three years just wide open and then it closed down for two or three years. Mm -hmm. So rather than sitting down and not doing anything, I'd get into something else. Were you in the building were you in the building business prior to that? I mean that I worked with my grandfather and my uncle. My uncle was a carpenter, so to speak. He was a contractor, or one of my uncles, one of them was, but 
one of them, and when he get a job, I would help him. But I was a pretty young man then, you know. I was back back in my teens, and but I grew up basically around the, the building business. Almost everybody did back then, didn't they? Oh, to yeah, some oh, extent, there, everybody was familiar with it. There was no permits. No, there was no anything. If you want to do something, you did it. And we didn't have any sub men like electricians, plumbers, whatever. A carpenter did We the did roofing. it all. A carpenter did, yeah, the whole thing. We did the whole thing. We dug the footing. We laid the block. We put out the subfloor. What would you sub out? What, what would you sub out during that era? The excavation? Sometimes, uh, if, if, if we had a lot to do, you know, carpenters kind of worked together then. Their sub man would help you and your sub man would help them. I mean, it was no, it was any problem. Or you may do a little bit of it and they come in and do a little bit, you know, it's just. Work it out. Yeah, yeah. And everything, everything worked out all right. Then, uh, and. Uh, where, where was y'all from then? Were you from Cleveland or Chattanooga? Oh, 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 oh Chattanooga. I, I, I can't even count the houses, you know, that I've probably built around them. So you or, were born or, and raised in Chattanooga? Oh, yes, yes. What part of Chattanooga? I was born in Rossville's Jordan on East Gordon Avenue, and I don't remember anything about that. I was young. And uh, then my dad, uh, he got a job in uh, Dayton, Ohio. And we moved to Dayton, Ohio. We didn't stay there long because he did not like the North. Now this was, you were born what year? 19 and 29. So, Hoover. What, what's your first memory? My first memory, it was in Dayton, Ohio. And only a couple of things. I remember Dad and I, uh, we, we lived in a little two-story house and uh, the back side of the house had a set of stairs that acted as a fire escape. About a four by four platform with the steps. So I was the first child, so you know, he spent a lot of time with me. Mm. And so he would bring in sand and put them at the bottom of the, <laughs> the bottom of the stairs. And he get on the platform upstairs, upstairs, and lit a bucket down. I'd fill it up with sand, and then uh, I'd pull it up to him. He'd empty it and put it back down, and it, stuff like that. That was and like see, your now first I remember, memory. That's just my recollection. What I remember. Mm -hmm. Then I remember having a little tricycle. He built a wooden box on the back that I filled it full of sand, would haul it in different places of the yard and stuff like that. And I'm having, I'm writing memoir now of my life. Oh, you are? I'm up to 1985. What's the name of the book? The Life of Charles A. McDowell, Alfred McDowell. Well, that would be interesting. Well, I'm, I've got, I'm, I'm uh, about ready to have part of it edited. And I have edited some of it, but it's how, how do you remember? Do you have to go back and say, "Oh, I forgot about putting that in there"? I have to go back and plug it in. I'm doing that now because when I read over it to edit it, I find I remember stuff and and stuff that I've misspelled. <laughs> are, are, you, are you typing it in? Well, on the computer, yeah. Would you learn to type? In high school, I had two years of typing. They don't teach typing anymore. No. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's gonna be paperback or hardback? No, paperback. It, it'll only probably be a hundred pages long. 
I'm up to about 85 now, 80 or 85 now. So, so, and I'll probably have to get somebody who's a little better with English than I am. <laughs> That's like a page. Uh, seems like it'd be longer than that. Well, this this is a full page, but when I don't know what it'll be when it's yeah. cutting. It'll be <coughs> four times that when. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 So, anyway. So you were born right after the Depression. You don't remember the Depression, I guess, right? I started Depression in October 19, 19 and 29. You were here, Hoover. You were here twenty days before the depression. Yeah, you might have been the reason. <laughs> May have. That's not the only thing. What's scary? Nineteen eighty-seven. What happened? Uh, I don't remember. They called it the second depression. Well, 87, I thought it was 2008. Two, <laughs> no, 1987. 1987. 1987. That was, uh, who was president? It was a crash. Was that Black Friday? Black Friday. Black Friday. That was on my birthday. October the 19th. Go back and look it up. I don't know where I was at in 87. <laughs> but I know the 90s were booming. Right. All the way up to 2006. Right. Then it died in 2009. Yeah. Right. Now, Charlie, were you, you started out in the construction business. That's what everybody did then, right? No, not in the, be uh, not in the beginning. Now, I, ever since I was a teenager, I've done repair work. Did a lot of interior decorating because my grandfather was a painter, decorator, mm. and I had helped him a lot. And that was the biggest part in the beginning was doing small jobs like a room of wallpaper, mm. painting, what have you. And every time I needed an extra book, I mean, I always ran out and got a do you think we do what we were started out doing when we was younger? I don't know. I was kind of a oddball. I mean, I do any. I, I had one job. Uh, only way I could get the job was to be a welder, and I went to school and certified to be a welder. So I mean, I didn't use it that long, but I. Did you I, do you think at that time this is what I need to do? Well, to get the job. Mm. Oh, yeah. What job was that? When I, well, let's back up here. We're jumping way ahead. Uh, well, I'm about to write my book. I better slow down. That's all right. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you may think of something you forgot. No, I, at one time, uh, I got between jobs. I got a job at the uh, rebuilding the TNT plant the second time. And I worked out there uh, in the maintenance division uh, in the emergency side of it. In other words, uh, it was like a fireman. We sat there until a fire comes. Well, we would sat there and we did what it, until something broke down and then we will fix it. Mm -hmm. But they closed down the TNT plant. And uh, I went to Cremet. Cremet was a new company that came in. I can't remember the is a government government facilities, but I went there and put my application in, and before they even built the plant. And they said, you know, we're not hiring anybody right now, but put your application in and you'll be on top of the list. So uh, I went to uh, Chattanooga Works of the uh, West, uh, Western Union, building teletype machines. 
and I went in there and asked the superintendent uh, if I could have a, a job at least till they got this other plant in and I'm out of a job. Do you need somebody or need somebody to fill in? I never was out of a job. Never did draw unemployment, really. And uh, he said, the only thing that I have is a grinding job on the night shift. And I don't think you'd like that. Well, I knew the guy. I knew I knew Mr. Walker. He was uh, he was a nice guy. And I said, I'll take it. So I went to work till Cramette opened up to, uh, to build the plant. And I worked there probably was more than eight months and did the grinding job and I, I won't go into the details of all of that but finally Western Union closed up and moved up north someplace. They closed Chattanooga plant down because DuPont, no not DuPont, uh, all of the technology had changed so that it was running teletypes. They were getting less and less and less and less. You know what, the, you remember what the teletype machine was? Was that, um, no. Well, you sit down in the typewriter, and since I could type, I could do that. But anyway, I used, uh, you sit down and you type it, and it perforates a, a tape and it gets long, 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 long. And then when you get ready to send something, you put it in this machine, it just r runs to the end. Like a telegraph. Yeah. Or similar. Right. Except it punches holes, I guess. Like the old... Uh, but I, did, I didn't do any of that until later. Uh, now, did, when you, did you go with four years to high school, or did, was there not a... Four years, yeah, four years what, to high Wasn't school. that unusual for the time? Really, because I couldn't afford to go to college. Why did you, you choose to go th through high school when, when most of the people were quitting high school, I guess? Well, actually, what happened, I was, I was going to Tyner High School, and... Uh, my dad died in 1944. I was just before I was 15 years old. Golly. And I was the youngest. <laughs> and uh, my mother had never worked. I was much older than my two brothers. And mother turns to me and says, son, you're the head of the house. So, Do you remember that like it was yesterday? Oh, like it was yesterday. Absolutely. 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 Dad had an aneurysm in his head, and, head and he, uh, uh, he didn't make it to the hospital. Uh, my father was a Baptist minister. Is that all he did? Mostly? No. No, nope, nobody he, did one thing then, did he? They? Never, he never would take a dime from the church, and uh, he pastored Fallen Water Baptist Church for three years, and then he went to Cell Creek. On Baptist, the mountain. Yeah, you know, Cell Creek up past Soddy Daisy up in that area, just before you yeah. get to Dayton. Yeah. And uh, he worked at Samuel Stamping and Enameling Company. And if I recall, the largest check stub after he died going through the papers, the largest check stub I ever saw was $44. For a week. That might have even been two weeks, huh? Four weeks. Four, four weeks. I mean, no, 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 no. Two weeks. Two weeks. Oh. $44 a week. Mm. Forty-four dollars a week, and of course, you know the people of the church—they were good. We always had 
somebody bringing groceries in and all this mm-hmm. stuff. But uh, when Dad died, there was two people in East Brainerd in a little community called Ryle Springs. You ever heard of it? Mm-hmm. Well, you go up East Brainerd Road. Just before you get to Banks Road, you ever been through there? Go East Brainerd Road, all right. Go all the way like you're going. You go before you go around that curve. Yep. Right there on this side of that curve was a grocery store and as a general store, really. They sold hay, cow feed, chicken feed, any kind of feed you wanted. Uh, gas, gas pump was had a glass container on top that held five gallons. You took a big, big lever and filled up that five gallon mm-hmm. tank, gravity fed it into the automobile. That took five minutes, I guess. <laughs> no, not really. It went through pretty fast. But uh, and uh, of course they sold a few work shoes, they sold a little bit of hardware. Uh, so that was being like a general store? Yes. So they offered me a job, uh, of course they knew us, so they, one of them went to church with us and they were trying to help us out. And back then, people called in, and this COVID reminds me of all that then back then. Because you took their order, you filled it, you delivered it to them. If it's close, I did it on a bicycle. Now this was after your dad died? Yes. If, if it's far away, they had a 37 Chevy pickup truck that I'd load it in and take it to them. At 15, at 15 years old. Yeah, well, I, at, by that, by this time, I don't think I drove, yes, I did. I, actually, I broke the law a little bit there from 15 to 16 because mother got me a permit to drive our old 36 Dodge. <laughs> to church and what have you. But when I went to work up there, I just kept driving and nobody ever said anything. When I was 16, I got my license. So actually I I drove some uh, by myself. Was it devastating when your dad died that young? Oh, absolutely. See, he and I, we, we sang together from the time I was eight years old, and I guess I've sung in every church in Chattanooga. What do you mean you and him would sing together, like in a choir? No, as a duet. <laughs> that was common? I don't know whether it's common or not, but we did it. Uh, I, uh, this, is be- now, this is before he started preaching. Uh, I mean, Dad was was not a religious man until I was up a, about eight years old, and we lived uh, we lived down Twenty Sixth Street in Chattanooga, across the street from uh, a Baptist church. I I think it's called Summerfield Baptist Church, and. Uh, Anyway, he uh, he changed his life around, and uh, and later on he uh, uh, got the calling or whatever that is, and and started in a ministry. But before that time, I remember <laughs> I remember being. In the bathroom, when Dad and my aunt, his sister, were clowning around, singing together, my sister sang alto. And Dad 
played a little guitar. He could he knew a lot of chords and he would play together. And they were out there singing. And as I say today, that's the first time that I heard harmony. And I started singing to myself with her. Mm -hmm. And so I ran out there one day and I said, let me, told Aunt Francis, I said, let me help, let me help you, help Daddy sing this song. And did. Mm -hmm. Well, Dad was just tickled to death. He was, well, anyway, after he started preaching, he bought me a little mandolin mm -hmm. and a book and learned all the chords. <laughs> I'd play the mandolin. He'd play the guitar. How and old would was, he have been then? Dad? Well, let's see, he was born in 1908, and that would have been, uh, oh. 30 years old? Somewhere around there, yeah, about 30 years old. Because he died at. You still remember him like it was yesterday? Oh, Lord, a mercy, yeah, we were close, mm -hmm. yeah. It uh, it ruined it, I mean it ruined my thinking really I mean I'm you know I'm still warped. Is that right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You think it really affected you that much? Oh oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, no no doubt in my mind. Might not have been as bad if you was fifty or if you was three. Maybe not, but yeah yeah, a, yeah yeah yeah. That's yeah. such a it, it, it it's a shame, but. It it warped me. It really did. And uh, I mean, I'm now this day and time. I don't ponder on it, but looking back and being realistic, uh, it, it 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 hit me. Uh, I don't know. I was trying to think. Uh, Well, I could get into all this, why he went to preaching and all that stuff, but I'm not going to get into all that. But uh, there's a lot of good stuff that, that I am putting in my uh, book about it. Uh, What's the difference between memoirs and uh, autobiography? I don't know. About the maybe, same. Maybe, a, maybe memoirs are... Uh, your 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 recollection versus I w I would say autobiography is about about what mine is yeah it's uh, oh I don't know uh, <laughs> I've I've ha I've been into so many things I can't even well you're you, being ninety two you know I was with a friend of mine here a while back and I said hey I'm feeling like this, and he said, yeah, that's one of the phases, and I thought, boy, that's not encouraging. <laughs> that's one of them. I thought this was it. <laughs> Ask somebody 90. Yeah, he said, he said, well, that's one of the phases. <laughs> Is there phases? Oh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. Do you just ignore them? You have to. You have to accept it or go off the deep end. Two choices. I mean, life is short. People don't realize how life short is. They, they don't even have a clue. It's of, not, sh you don't think of it being short till you get about 35. Then you think, dang, this is short. Yeah. It's like a piece of toilet, or a new roll of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. When that roll gets down like this, that sucker goes fast. Yeah. <laughs> But, but Charlie, you're in good shape. You may be here another. I, I don't even, I can't, I can't even ponder on it. I don't know. Okay. How, how, how old is the, do you think people are getting older now than they used to be? You, living you mean, longer. You're living longer? Yeah. Well, I don't know. When I look at the paper, uh, I, I think that. And I think statistically, yes. But if you look at the paper, uh, and when you're older you get, you notice stuff like this. They run anywhere now from 55 to 82, that's the average. Mm -hmm. And you have, you have several in there in the, in the paper uh, that'll run 
uh, up to 90 or maybe 80, 86 or 87. Uh, they say if you live to be 65, your odds of living to be 85 are pretty good. Well, I, I beat all the odds so far. And there's nothing wrong with you. Were you were you a big health nut, or were you a were you a you 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 beans not, and when I was growing up, beans and potatoes and cornbread, eggs, sausage, biscuits. Did gravy. you get tired of that same stuff, or was it just oh, well, what back you did? then? I didn't even think about it. I mean, mother one day to have butter beans, then one day she'd have pintos, whites, black eyed great peas. Great no, no, yeah, sometimes, but. At the end of the week, we had specialty. She mixed all these pe these beans that were left over together. We had mixed beans. Yeah, yeah mixed beans. <laughs> She'd take the mashed potatoes and make potato patties. <laughs> Did you put onions in your, like eat raw onions with your beans? Oh, sure. Like a slice of Vidalia? Oh, sure. Well, that's good, isn't it? Any kind of onion, yeah. green onions, yeah. whatever. You what name. about cornbread? Was it thick or thin? Thick cornbread. I like it thin. Oh, well, I know. Everybody's got their own Why do you taste. like it thick? I, I, wherever mother put it on the table is the way I Isn't ate it. Isn't that funny? The way your mother cooked it is the way you like it. <laughs> if your I, mother had cooked it thin, you'd want it thin. If my mother cooked it thick, I'd want it thin. Well, I like to cook, and I still cook it thick. You cook it with uh, salt in it or sugar? Salt? Salt or sugar. Oh, sometimes I put a little sugar, but not enough to really even taste. It's just a... You ever crumble it up in milk? I, I love I love cornbread and buttermilk. Oh, I do too. I like cornbread and milk, not buttermilk. I like cornbread any kind of milk. But you put it in... Warm cornbread. You put it in buttermilk, though? Oh, yes. Does that help your stomach sometimes when you're... Maybe. <laughs> but, you just, but it's just good. You just eat it because it's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Now, when you said she make, she took the potatoes and made, pa, uh, what what do you call it? There's a name for that. And there, uh, where you fry, you, you fry mashed potatoes into a patty? Patty. Well, what you do, you take your mashed potatoes, put a little flour in it, and a little cream in it, what kind of cream? Pure cream. What do you mean cream? Just Any kind of cream. I mean, Sour cream? They don't use evaporated milk like they did back then. Mother made gravy out of evaporated milk. That makes the best gravy you can eat. Is take. What, where did they come up with evaporated milk? I mean, who came up with that idea? Well, I don't ask the me. Army? I don't know. But anyway, she would take that and mix a little water with it, like two-thirds to one-third water, and put the flour in the, in the skillet, salt and pepper, flour, let it come to whatever consistency she wanted, how dark she wanted it, mm -hmm. and then pour slowly the milk in there to make the gravy, and you try it sometime. I will, but I but those potatoes that sounds good. Potatoes, you take <clears throat> mashed potatoes, and not a whole lot of flour, just a little bit of flour, and put it in there, and and maybe a tablespoon or two tablespoons of cream, and mix it up, and pour it like you was making a pancake. Mm -hmm. And they get real brown on one side. I've, well, I've seen on both sides. Yeah. Now the, the insides though is still a little mushy, right? Oh yes, yes, you, yes, yes. And what do you, you put butter on it, or you? Some people just put butter on it. Some people put a little syrup on it, like a pancake. Some people eat it straight. What would you call that? Uh, not a hot cake. Not a no. flapjack. Uh, no, maybe a fritter. No. no uh, they did it on gun smoke a lot. <laughs> they always cooked that on gun smoke. But so so like now like spaghetti, did you have that a lot? Or was that an oddity? 
Mm, not a lot, occasionally, yeah. It was mostly beans, potatoes, cornbread. And when I went out, I had 15 rabbit gums, rabbit traps, that I ran every morning before I went to school. And if I brought in a rabbit, I was the king bee. My dad loved rabbits and gravy. So you went out every morning? <laughs> oh, yeah. I run those rabbit guns. When that door was down, mm -hmm. sometimes something tripped it, but most of the time you had you a nice big fat rabbit in there. Especially so you didn't have to get close. You could just get close enough to see the door? Oh, yeah. And did you do that out of necessity, or was that just what they did? Well, I, I actually I did it just for fun, but it became uh, well. I don't know what you would call it. I mean, we brought one in, everybody was happy. <laughs> Cause we had meat. What now? Did you have the indoor plumbing then? Oh, sometimes I, I didn't have indoor. Actually. Actually, I didn't have an indoor bathroom until I was No, I take that back. We had an indoor bathroom when I was eight, and then I can't remember I can't remember having the inside bathroom until. Full time, actually, until I was married. I mean, I mean uh, it was we had kitchen water, but we had an outside bathroom. Didn't have a toilet or anything, and we would, uh, and sometimes we'd move in and have a house where we had a back porch, and we'd make a, we'd make a section off of the kitchen, a door into it to have an in, inside toilet, but we didn't have a bathtub. I took a bath in a number two and a half wash tub until I was up in my early teens. And that's that was normal. Oh yeah. That wasn't that, that wasn't oh, yeah, that no. wasn't being poor. That was just normal. Yeah, well, yeah. A lot of people had it inside, and I guess we we're in between. I won't say that I was poor because I never was hungry. I, ne I mean, I never was hungry or anything like that. Now, when your dad died, what did your mother do? Did she take on a job? Of course mother had never worked. And so I went to work. We, uh, Gene Turner on Dodds Avenue was a good friend of dad's. And he came to dad one day and said, I'm going to offer you a deal. I got two houses on Graysville Road out in East Brainerd. The two nice little houses, but none of them have in, indoor bathrooms. And I'll sell them to you. I mean, the interest is like nothing. Both houses, the payments on them were $38. For I remember. the two? Each? No. Both houses, thirty-eight dollars. Mm. That was a payment mm. paid directly to Gene. And Dad always, he told me the little house next door, which was nothing but a kitchen, living room, and a bedroom. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a kerosene stove, outside bathroom. We did have a sink with water in it in the kitchen. Kerosene stove for cooking or for heating? For cooking. And the uh, where'd you get the kerosene? Huh? Where'd you get the kerosene? Did you have to go to the store. Store, yeah, yeah. Because the kerosene has a little smell to it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But you didn't know that you didn't. Everybody lived with it. Anybody mm -hmm. had it. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, Dad said the little house's son said. When you get married, that'll be your starter house. You can live there, and then there's three of us. Uh, each one of you can have a start, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, 
and as long as I lived there, I never had an inside bathroom, so. <laughs> Could you do that today? Could I? Yeah. If I had to. I mean, you you have to roll roll with whatever you got. You can't you can't worry about it because you're here and and you're lucky to be here. I, uh, if you enjoy life, if you enjoy the beauty of the universe, uh, you just you just have to take what comes. You can't worry about it. Do you look back and say, why did I, And if you had it all to do all, all over again, would you just not worry about anything? Or, or do you think worrying is a form of concern and you had that concern so you, you did better at it or, or you're better off to just ignore everything? Worrying is human nature. I mean, you're going to, but then when you have to learn to stop and take stock and say, hey, there's nothing you can do about it. If there is anything, do what you can do. My <laughs> poor granddad, he was a joker. He said, don't worry about anything because everything's not going to be all right anyway. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. a good point. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Think everything's all be all right. But sometimes you think, well, if I keep worrying about it, I'll figure out the, I'll, I'll figure it out. Is there a difference between worrying? You, you clog your mind up. So do you think in in ten minutes you can figure out a, the correct answer as well as you can in I won't three say, weeks? I won't say ten minutes. A lot of times I've got something on my mind. I'll get up three o'clock in the morning, go to the bathroom, and it'll hit me. So. Are you trying to think of it, or, or is it just Not you? even trying. It just comes to you. You just, many a time I've gotten up. And earlier I've tried to figure something out of thinking and, 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 and get up in the morning, it'll. So maybe the thinking didn't help any? I can't say. Who knows? <laughs> That's like. <laughs> We can't figure all this stuff out, can no, we? No, 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 no way, no way, no way. Do you remember a time in your life when you were just, you just had it, you just taken all you could take? We won't get into that. But were there times? <laughs> Why, well, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That's just part of it, isn't it? That's part of it. There's, that's, you're absolutely right. So do you think, uh, now I know you've never been one to really be a big going to the doctor guy. You only go if there's a problem, right? I, I, I don't know. I try to take my yearly physical. Uh, Have you done that for a long time? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Like in your... 40s or 50s, or did well, you start? Well, your... how can you preach to when you're in a service station business, and how can you preach to a guy that he's got to do preventive maintenance if you don't do yeah. it on yourself? <laughs> and I've never known you to be a big go to the doctor guy. No, I do. If I have, uh... I mean, if if you don't have anything wrong. Oh no! If I don't have anything wrong, no. But but that's what a checkup is. Yeah. It's a, it's a checkup, is, uh, and in my younger years, no, but when you get older, all this other stuff creeps up on you and you don't know what's going on, you've got to find out about it. But that's because but that's you're going to see because there's something wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if there's nothing wrong. Oh, no, 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 no. That no. just adds worry, doesn't it? Yeah, I really don't worry about it. <laughs> I know it's going to happen. I've been fortunate to live almost 92 years. And I'm not going to do anything stupid to bring it on if I can help it. If I can do about any if I can do something about anything, I I you know, I evaluate it and do it. 
but to worry about it, no, I don't sit back and worry and run, run, no, 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 no. Was there ever a time when you did worry? Or have you always been a roll with the punches guy? I have to roll with the punches, yeah. Have you always been bet, that way? I've been, I don't know what you call it, worry. I've been concerned a lot of times, but uh, it's, it's, you get to the point to where, you know, I've done all I can do and I mean, I just don't ponder on it. I just don't ponder on it. And you never have been a ponder? No. No. Wonder why that has been your nature? I have no idea. I have no idea. I guess, I guess it stems back. My dad died uh, a few months before he was 37 years old. And look, I've outlived him almost three times. And uh, you can waste, you can ruin the rest of your life by worrying about all this junk. Or you can try to live with what you got, and it gets less and less and less. And you have to live with what you got. I mean, uh, I had. Uh, I don't know whether it makes any sense or not. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. But when I'm just trying to sell myself on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think my wife thinks I'm crazy sometimes. But uh, <clears throat> you've got about the nicest wife. She is. She is a doll. She's I wonder doll. how you ended up with her. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. It's just, Was it your looks? <laughs> no, no luck. Luck. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, but uh, I would say if it hadn't been for her, I wouldn't be here today. How come? Well, things have happened in my life that uh, that I didn't choose to happen, and it was it was. Uh, well, all I can say is just happened. I can't get into details on it, but uh, it, in other words, when you get, have expectations and it doesn't turn out just like you want it to turn out, mm -hmm. you can do two things. I mean, you can go crazy over it or you got to accept it and go on. And uh, it just happened that uh, the right person came along and uh, I took a different attitude on my desire to live, I'll put it that way. There's two ways to, there's two or three different ways to commit suicide and, and shooting yourself is not, you know, doesn't have to be the only reason. You can, you can, you can, uh, give up and not take care of your body. You can give up and do stupid stuff and it'll kill you. And like, like the dope addicts, you know, they get depressed, they keep taking more and more dope, da 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 uh, There's several ways to give up. Do you think people are in general are different than they were, say, 50 years ago. I think people are the same since the beginning of time from going back uh, watching documentaries of different people. They have, they have circumstances that they either can't handle or they make a stab at handling them or uh, I don't know. I don't think there's an answer. Uh, everybody's born differently. Uh, people think differently. Uh, they differ likes, dislikes, and but but forty years ago, were people thinking more the same? Four years ago. Forty years ago. Forty 50, years ago. Fifty years ago. Were they thinking more, as a general rule, the same? I don't. I don't. I mean, as far as. It, uh, 
I guess what I'm trying to say is, are there, are men today like men were 50 years ago? Have, have the men lost their manlyhood as far as being able to change a tire or being able to deal with a situation or? They're all the same. The only difference is most of them have gotten more liberal and out front with their thoughts, out front with their actions, out front with what they believe, out front with everything. And so I guess we would say they don't keep it all in the closet, anything, whatever it amounts. Whatever so if, it, they, if they can't, uh, so 50 years ago, they'd say, I'll put, just like putting up their mailbox at their house. Would, would a man always go out and put his mailbox up then, or would he hire somebody to put his mailbox up? Because nowadays, I don't know if people can even put up a mailbox. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't tell you because I wouldn't even think about it. Though. In my younger years, that is, I probably would try it now. <laughs> but, but would you be would you be afraid to would, back then would you be afraid to ask somebody to put your mailbox up? Not really. If I didn't have, well, <laughs> oh, that's a that's a simple, rough question. It's hard to answer. I would not. Uh, in my younger years, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even give it. It wouldn't run across my mind. In my younger years, it wouldn't even run across my mind. At my age now, I'd say, yeah. But, but that's an age thing, not a, not a, not a society thing. In <laughs> other words, I, I think people back then would deal with their own, with their situation, rather than always asking for help. Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, I don't can't remember asking anybody to do anything. And was everybody like that? Uh, for, as to my knowledge, except the, the hierarchy that you know they expected everybody to do something for them. But that that was that was paying somebody. And yes, 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 yes. But are men still the same as they were then, as far as being men? No, no, no. Back then, if you called somebody an sob, if you did today, eh. But back then, was it a fight? Just is it, it was going to be a fight? <laughs> back then, probably more so than now. <laughs> because because people are dip, people people were more. Uh, I guess maybe they were more proud. Maybe that's the word I'm looking yeah, for. I would say that. I'll, I'll handle my own issues, my own affairs. Right. I'll yeah. I'll I'll row my own boat. Right. Exactly right. Yeah. And they are exceptions, always. Sure. No exceptions. Do you do you see uh, the afterlife differently now than you you would have forty years ago? What afterlife? I mean, as far as what it may be. Who knows? Can you tell me somebody that's experienced it and can explain it? All I can tell you is what I've read that people that have said they've died and come I'm, back and all I'm that not, stuff. And, and who knows? I mean, they seem to be very convinced. I know. I know. I realize that. But your your thoughts on it are the same. Same as what? As what they would have been forty years ago. Uh, my thoughts. Well, let's see. My thoughts from my thoughts are different. They were thirty years. My thoughts are different when I was thirty years old. I'll put it that way. You think it has to do with age? I have no earthly. I can't answer that. But they're different. They're different. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Uh, 
it, <clears throat> it might be I don't know what you call it, age or I'm a realist. That's 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 the my problem. I'm I, I I'm a realist. Realist. Uh, what 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 does that definition mean? A realist. I've heard people say that, but because <laughs> because. I mean, a realist just means you just say it like it is, right? Okay. But what is my hand doing? It's closed. How many fingers I have? Two. On? How many fingers? Two. I have? <laughs> That's a realist. But now, all right, on those issues, <laughs> but, you know, uh, let, let's say, I, I saw your post on Facebook, your friend that got in trouble with the Y. Mm -hmm. What was the deal on that? I mean, he, from what I read, he did absolutely nothing. Uh, that's true. I swam with him for four years. Went to Egypt with him. I've been halfway around the world with him. You vouch he's a good guy. Oh, absolutely. Yep. I mean, he's, uh, he can... Uh, he he thrives on being accepted and being with a group. He's a foreigner, you know. He's an, he's an Egyptian, and he'd been here since he's seventeen years old. And he would give anybody on the street shirt off his back if they didn't have one and needed one. If you vouch for him, I'm good with him. Oh, I'm serious, uh, uh, but. Uh, Things have happened that I can't get into right now publicly. So, but uh, I think it was due to uh, the management not stopping to take stock on hearsay information and searching further into it before he made a move. That's the only thing. I don't. And 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 on the next thing is everybody makes mistakes. I'll put that. Sure. And if they if they come to the realization that they jump too fast and everything, that'll it'll come out all right. But uh, I just saw a need to step in and. And uh, take take that guy and try to help him. What made you feel that need? Uh, on hand observation. On hand observation. I think that's what I was thinking about earlier. No, no, on hand observation. I was with the guy every day. I heard him talk, call these little kids, honey, baby, sugar. You're, you're so cute, I'm going to adopt you. They say that all the time. And they took the word as, I'm going to abduct you. God. And, and and then they jumped up and said, I'm going to get out of here. I don't want you in here anymore. I don't want you in here more. I bet that scared him to death. He, he and his wife cried for three days. Which is worse. <laughs> but you speaking out for him... It, is is extremely something to be proud of, Charlie. I don't know about that. That's it. No, I'm I, impulsive. <laughs> if it hits me, <laughs> but I mean that 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 yeah. is what I think I I was getting at. The nowadays people just let that go, and 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 that's somebody else's problem, and and and, oh, and maybe your generation is man enough to say that's not right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. It's, it's not right. And, and No matter what it is, not or, just this, this guy from is, Egypt. Or who it is. I don't care if he's black, white. Yeah, or, or the situation. You, you got the nerve to say, that's not right, and I'm speaking up. Do you feel an obligation? 
I, I, I don't think that's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was, I thought. You want part uh, of this coffee? Uh, just half? No. You sure? Uh-uh. Not this late. I'm, <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> <laughs> what time do you get up in the morning? Seven, about seven every morning. Do you set the alarm clock or do you just wake no, up? No, no, no. <clears throat> I wake up when the sun comes up. Yeah. Have you always been that way? Yeah, just about. Never, never a problem waking up? No, no, no. You go to bed at the same time every night? Ten thirty. Ten forty sometimes? No. Ten just about ten thirty every night. Sometimes ten, but <laughs> <laughs> Are you always going to bed about ten thirty? No. Or do you get in the habit and stay in it for a while till something? No, my younger years, you know, I'd stay up a little later and wake up a little but but now if uh, habit. If you you know go to if you get in the habit of going to sleep at a certain time, wake it up at a certain time, then your body is acclimated, and you don't disturb it. How do you know that? How? Yeah. Common sense. Because there are studies that say that. Common sense. I. Don't, <laughs> I went for the studies. I, they I say did. it helps you to go to sleep when you go to sleep. Exactly. It helps you to wake up. Exactly right. Do you think that? Getting in a habit like that is healthy, no matter what oh, it is. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, no matter what it is, yeah. that's your body. Your, your body says, "Hey, it's time to go to sleep." <laughs> about about. I mean, do you eat lunch about the same time every day? No, I don't think about that now. I don't even. Think about so that. sleeping and getting up is yeah. about the same time. Yeah. I'm I'm not a fanatic on having to do everything at this time and da 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 da. But sleeping, getting up, I do that most of the time, and I don't do it <coughs> consciously. I mean, I just do it. Uh, do, you, do you watch TV when you go to sleep? Do you have the TV on, or you just no, go to sleep? No, no, I don't have some TV in my bedroom. You just turn the lights off and go to sleep. Oh yeah. <laughs> just don't, oh, yeah. What do you think about? What I think about? Yeah, when you go to sleep. I say, God, I thank you for another day. And that's it? I mean, you don't, I mean, you don't think about what you're going to do or you're going to go to the Y at the oh, left and you're no, going to no, no, meet Eddie Cartwright for lunch. No, or, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. No, no. And just go to sleep? I mean, like you think... Subconsciously, I may not wake up in the morning. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> you ever see Eddie across the street? Uh, about uh, three hours ago. What was he doing? He came over to visit me. What, just to say hi? Well, he had a few things to say. <laughs> you know, Eddie. What was he wanting? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying it. <laughs> he would. He was. He yeah. came I mean, in. he would tell. He would tell on you, wouldn't he? Or would he? If he had a chance. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Eddie Cartwright is a is a really good guy. Oh yeah. He really is a absolutely, good guy. Absolutely, absolutely. He's a very caring, <laughs> compassionate guy. He uh, he'll help you if he can, won't he? Yeah. Yeah. What about yeah. Teresa? She lives next door, right? I have a hard ever see her. I haven't spoke to her a dozen times since she's been there. Well, she's a good neighbor. She is, yeah. She's a yeah. she's a good person too. She's she's a worker and she's, she's on the smart. go all the time. She's on the go wherever she's at right now. She's going ninety miles an hour. Nine, and that mind's going ninety Nine, miles. Yeah, the night, her <laughs> mind's going faster than she is. <laughs> so now three days a week at the Y. Do you just swim and that's all? Sometimes if they're having a class and I have time to have to wait till the class is over, I'll go in the weight room. I'll either ride the bicycle, pull the rowing machine, or sometimes if I feel pretty good, I'll go in and do the treadmill for a little while. Do you have a locker there? Oh, absolutely, ever since it opened. How much is that a year? A hundred dollars. 
You got a combination lock or a key combination lock? Combination lock. Do you take showers there? Absolutely. You sit in the sauna? No, not much, not much. Not much, not much. What about the hot tub? Well, I'm not supposed to get in the hot tub. I had a staph infection in my leg, and they oh, said that right. hot water set it off. Yeah. Before that, was the hot tub a, yeah. a go-to? Yeah, but that that's what set it off the last time. So. Oh, is that what they think? Yeah, oh, yeah. Now, is the, is the sauna or the steam room, you can go into either one of them? I can go into either one of them. Because of the same reason? Well, I don't know. Usually, I spend so much time, I don't have time, and I get out of there. <laughs> but if you, but you're not a steam room or sauna guy. Nah, I don't sit there for hours. No, huh? no. no. Now, do you go to stay in shape? Is it something just to do, or is it add regiment to your to your day? Or I don't even think about it in that way. I just do it because I say use it or lose it. <laughs> use it or lose it. And some things you're gonna lose whatever you whether you like it or not. <laughs> well I tell you what, Charlie, you are you are what I would classify as a man's man. I don't know. My wife, I think I'm not my, sure what that means. My wife but I thinks think, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, uh, we put that uh, chair in your house, and you don't even use it, right? That uh, No, I, I do use it, yeah. I, sometimes I walk up just for exercise, but uh, I had a little trouble with vertigo, and I don't want to be stupid and come down there and hit yeah. with vertigo. What do you attribute your long, your not only your long life, but your getting around? I mean, you drove here. <laughs> yeah, somebody asked me that they a, say year, they, a year ago if they've taken my driver's license away from it and made me mad, and I went and bought me a new auto. <laughs> <laughs> at, at your age, is being able to see at night the new sexy? Do what now? At your age, is being able to drive at night the new sexy? <laughs> uh, driving at night, I have a little more problems with that. I can still do it, but it, it's not as easy. Uh, I scare my wife to death, but uh, I'll go anywhere I want to go. Now next week you'll go to why three days, right? Three. Well, sometimes I go five. Sometimes I go six. But, but what else will you do? Will you, do you have a full week next week planned? I don't want to think about it. I just get up, and do what I want to do. Fish most of the time. You <laughs> me, fish once a week. Me and me and Raymond Swafford go fishing. I love Raymond. We just he, he called me tonight. I gave him some fish gumbo and. He said, call me next week and we'll go fishing. Tim D says, hey, he, I like him. He's a, he's a rascal. I, he knows me. He's a rascal. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't have anything you've got to do, like you don't work, you don't... No, I don't do anything. Just do what I want to do. That's retirement. How long have you been retired? 1992. <laughs> mm. Do you remember when you said, that's it, I'm not working no more? Oh, yeah, my wife said, you'll never quit working until you give up your contractor's license. Well, that's what I need to do, give mine up. And so I didn't renew them anymore after that. If you'd have kept them, you probably wouldn't have lived this long. I don't know. I, don't, I can't say that. I don't, I've been very fortunate. I know that. I can't. I've been very fortunate. So you don't have any advice for anybody that's wanting to live to be ninety-five? No, I don't. I don't know. I don't. It's hard to say. That's hard to say. Do you think that God has a plan for us, and 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 we we can't do much to change that? 
I would like to think that, but I can't concrete say because I don't know. So uh, just live. I really don't know. I know. I, I know. Uh, if. Uh, I think there's a supreme being. I think that all this stuff, I mean, the human body is more complicated than all this compu all this technology stuff is going on. It would take them a thousand years, technology would take a thousand years to catch up what the human body can do. And if it's got them boggled, how can I figure it out? <laughs> that was the perfect ending, wasn't it?